Well, good morning. My name's Sarah, and it's great to be with you this morning. My kids are at school. It's quiet in the house. I've got a cup of tea, and it's not going to go cold. I'd like to share with you today um, a Bible passage from Mark's Gospel. I'm going to begin at verse 12, uh, chapter 14. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Imagine you are in the room with the disciples. Try to picture the scene. What can you see? What can you hear? In your mind's eye, watch Jesus dip the bread in the bowl and pass it to Judas. How does Judas respond? And how does that make you feel? As we consider this scene, we are connecting our story with that of the Last Supper. It allows the power and love of Jesus into our experience. I'll just read these verses 22 to 24 again. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When Jesus breaks the bread, he consecrates it. That means he declares it sacred, sets it apart for something special. When we eat the bread, his truth enters into us and our bodies become a space where Jesus is at home. He lives in our lives, fulfilling in them the purpose for which he has consecrated them. 
like the bread in the Holy Communion, we are consecrated in order to be broken and given out to others. Like the wine, we are consecrated in order to be poured out for others. Communion is for the community. It's an inclusive matter, all about the inclusivity of God. And the pandemic has altered everything in our community over the last 12 months. And I wonder how do you feel about that? Does it make a difference to how you worship and receive God in your life? Has it made a difference to your prayer life or how you connect with other people? For me, there's a sense of loss and fear, and I'm afraid I might have forgotten how to talk to real people. Maybe today, as you go about your day, think of the story of the Last Supper and imagine what Jesus must have felt knowing he was about to be betrayed by one of his closest friends. Nobody understood what Jesus was going through at the time. And yet Jesus does understand the depths of our emotions. He does understand our loneliness and fear. Maybe as you eat your breakfast or your dinner or tea today, remember Jesus, broken for you, poured out for you. Ask him to feed you and give you strength for the days ahead, so you might be set apart, consecrated to bring that essence of Jesus wherever you go, whether on Zoom or social media or at a social distance. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the Last Supper, that precious meal you shared with your disciples that bread and wine so ordinary yet so sacred. Help us to find you in the ordinary moments of our day. Fill us with your peace, joy and love so we can share you with all we meet. Amen. Amen.